Good afternoon and welcome back ladies, gents and Pikachus to another analysis and breakdown of the Quran of the Muslims. Yes, we're back once again to break this thing down verse by verse into factual logical statements in English so that we can understand who or what is Allah, what does he mean by the contents of his book here, and more importantly for us, how does this affect us as non-believers in our lives today. So before I start, as I always do, I'm going to kindly ask you now if you have any doubts as to my factual accuracy or questions about the things I'm about to say. Please first buy and read one of these, a Tajveed Quran with meanings translated into English, and after having done so you will recognise every single word I'm about to tell you now is 100% true of the words of Allah in his book, and what Muslims believe today. Despite their many denials, this is what Islam is, if they call themselves a Muslim, they must believe on this, and that is what they do. So, with that in mind, let's carry on where we left off in the last episode. Where we got up to was verse 16 of Al-Baqarah, the heifer, in which Islam is um, structured and described to the Muslim by Allah and his angels. And it starts off with a little bit about how they are going to behave, but then quickly degrades into an insulting diatribe towards the Christians and Jews, the people of the book. And that is where we are going to pick up from today. So, without further ado, let's begin. So I'm going to do what I normally do and show you the page, because Muslims will whinge and bitch and say I haven't translated it properly or I'm lying. That's what we're going to read through. And the bit that we're going to read through is still Allah talking about the people of the book, Christians and Jews, and how he's going to punish them for not worshipping, worshipping, worshipping Allah and doing exactly what they're told. So, verse 17. Their similitude is that of a man kindled in fire when it is lighted all around him. Allah took away their light and left them in utter darkness so that they could not see. That's interesting, isn't it? Nazi? Nazis? It sounds like they're Nazis, if you ask me. But anyway, that's a different conversation. So, breaking it down, their similitude means they are like something. That's what similitude means. So, if I say um, a football, it's like a circle with stuff, you know, um, printed on it. That's the similitude of a football, is the stuff printed on a circle. So, their similitude, the Christians and Jews, are like that of a man who kindled a fire. So he's saying the Christians and Jews, they're like a guy who's made a bonfire. You know, they've made the bonfire in order to create light and heat so they can sit there and be happy and cook their food and be nice and safe and peaceful and content. That's what the Christians and Jews are like. So Allah is recognising here, Christians and Jews, although Muslims haven't actually met them yet, Allah is telling the Christians and Jews are like guys at a bonfire, you know, they look nice and happy and they look approachable, they're, they're decent people, they're not doing anything wrong, they're not threatening you in any way. So that's what they're like. But Allah took away their light and left them in utter darkness so they could not see, so he's straight away saying to his Muslims, see those Christians and Jews over there with their flipping light, how dare they have Jesus, how dare they have, who do they think they are? Who do they think they are over there with light and a Lord and a holy book that is not this holy book, that is not me, that is not my light? I'm jealous. That's what Allah is saying. He's planting the seed in the mind of the Muslim that even though they've never met these guys, those dudes over there, Christians and Jews, around their little light, you know, their little Jesus and their little bonfire, being all happy and content and peaceful, we are going to get them. <laughs> That's what he's saying. 18. Deaf, dumb and blind, they will not return to my pathway. <laughs> this is just dear fun, isn't it? So if we break that down. Deaf, dumb and blind, they will not return to my path. So Allah is saying, those guys over there with their holy book and their Jesus, or, you know, the Jews and their God, which is effectively the same thing, they have come away from the path of Allah. That's what he's saying. They will not return to my path. So even though it's not true, we know that it's not true from factual sources and from common sense, Allah is lying to his Muslims straight away there, but subversively. So he's blinding them with a lie, if you like. He's telling the, Jew, the uh, Muslims that Jews and Christians, even though their religion is much older and they were there first and their religion was there first, Allah is telling Muslims, no, Allah was there first and Christians and Jews used to be on the path 
the Amar set, you know, the straight pass to the Judgment Day, but they have strayed away from it and they've gone over there and that's why they needed to make their bonfire. So he's suggesting that their bonfire, i.e. their religion, their light, is something they made up after Allah had, um, you know, seen the last of them. They'd left Allah and they'd gone and they'd made this light. And because they have done that, he's going to punish them with utter darkness. He's going to take it off them. When he does that, they will be deaf, dumb and blind. So, do we think Allah is suggesting that all Christians and Jews are physically blind and dumb and deaf? No, I don't think he is. I think what he's doing here is using another similitude. He's saying the reason that they are deaf is because Muslims are saying, guys, you have to worship Allah and you have to do this Quran stuff and forget your little bonfire and your Jesus stuff. You know, you have to do this. And they are going, nope, I'm not listening. I don't care what you say. Allah's not real. Quran's rubbish. It's all a false religion. We're quite happy with what we've got. That's the reason they're deaf. It's not that they can't hear. It's that they are refusing to listen. Then he says they are dumb and blind. So why are they dumb? What does dumb mean? Dumb means unable to speak or really, really thick. So do we think Allah is saying they're unable to speak considering they have gone away and made a bonfire? No, I think he's referring to the other type of dumb. He's saying the Christians and Jews over there with their little bonfire, their holy light of Jesus, the reason why they are dumb is because when we are preaching them Islam and trying to get them to read the Quran, worship Allah, and they're saying no, they're really stupid. They don't understand that if they say no, we're going to have to kill them. Even though it's not written, it's between the lines that Allah is going to punish them. He's already said that. They're going to incur a great penalty. He's also said he's going to leave them in utter darkness and he's going to take away their light. Now he's saying they are deaf, dumb and blind because they will not return to his pathway. So he's jealous that they don't want to be Islamic. They're deaf because they won't listen to reason and they won't submit to his will and be Islamic. They are dumb because they don't realise by doing this they are endangering their own life, i.e. he's going to send his Muslims to kill them. And they are blind because they don't see that it's going to be better for them if they become slaves of Islam. Therefore, he won't kill them straight away, but when they get to the Judgment Day, they will have to be killed by then. So even though it's not explicitly written, it's very sneaky. They are in fact deaf because they won't listen. They are in fact dumb because they don't want to believe in Allah. And the reason he is describing them as blind is because they will be blinded by the lies in which he is speaking. This. That is the only way you can be blind, even though you're in front of a bonfire and you have light. You couldn't see light if you were physically blind. And he said himself they could see it because they're in front of a bonfire enjoying light, so they're not blind. So he is suggesting he is going to blind their eyes with lies because they didn't willingly submit to him. So he's going to submit them anyway. When he told them the truth and said, guys, be a slave of mine, I want you to be Islamic, and they said no... Now he's going to use deception, trickery and lies to get them to submit to his will anyway. So he's going to enslave them through violent means is what that means. 19. Or another similitude is that of a rain laden cloud from the sky. In it are zones of darkness and thunder and lightning. But they press their fingers in their ears because of the stunning thunderclap and they fear for their death because Allah is ever round the rejectors of his faith. So, another similitude. So he's painting a picture to the Muslim. Because remember, Muslims, they don't really, they haven't met Christians or Jews. They don't know anything about this. They don't know about the bonfire, the light. They don't know anything. They're being preached this by an imam who can read because they can't read. Remember, this is in the Dark Ages when virtually the entire world could not read, especially Muslims couldn't read. And even Mohammed, the perfect prophet who, who does everything and is all singing, all dancing, that guy couldn't even read. So there's no chance these guys can. So they're being preached on this by the imams. And the imams are saying, oh Muslims, another similitude for those guys over there, Christians and Jews that you haven't met yet. They are like guys with a rain cloud hovering over their head. It's like a cartoon. You know where the rain cloud's hovering over your head and it doesn't matter where you go, it's always over your head. That means unluck. That means bad fortune. So he's saying... Those guys over there are going to get bad fortune. Their bonfire is going to be taken away by Allah because they're deaf, dumb and blind. They won't submit to him willingly. They don't want to be Islamic. 
and it's like a rain cloud hovering over them. Sooner or later, the storm is going to hit them, and they will be underneath Allah's reign. So that's what Allah is saying here. He is going to dominate the Christians and Jews, and they will have to submit to his will and his reign. When that happens... They are going to look up at the sky, some of them will see darkness, and some of them will see lightning. So no one's seeing anything good. The guys seeing darkness are the ones who haven't been hit by the lightning yet. The guys who see the lightning are being hit by the lightning. And the effect that the lightning has is that they get scared and they put their fingers in their ears. That's how it says it. It says, they press their fingers in their ears because of the stunning thunderclap and for fear of death. So that proves it. Even though Muslims deny this, why would they be pressing their fingers in their ears and have a fear of death just from a simple lightning storm? It's not like Jews and Christians never see lightning before. Read the Old Testament. There's tons of storms through the Old Testament and it doesn't end up with them dying. So the similitude of the lightning is not actual lightning. Allah is sending the flashes of lightning, which means Muslims are going to be sent over to the Christians and Jews to create the thunderclap, which is going to scare the Jews and Christians into a fear of death. And part of that attack, which he's going to send with his Muslims, is going to blind them with lies. So we know this in page 3 of the Quran is telling us Allah's commanding his Muslims, go over there to those Christians and Jews for me, because I want you to put out their bonfire. I want you to kill their religion, take it away from them. And the reason why you are doing this, you're not going to try and negotiate with them first because it's pointless, is because they are deaf, dumb and blind, i.e. they don't see the point in what you're saying, they're not listening to what you're saying, and they're too stupid to recognise you're going to kill them if they don't, or they don't believe it. So you are going to be the lightning clap, so Muslims, you are going to bring them into darkness with lies and deceit until they are fearful of their death, and if they still won't surrender to Allah, off with their heads, they are dead. That's what this means. But it's a religion of peace, honestly. Religion of peace, grace and mercy, Allah. Who are you trying to kid, Allah? Like, do you think we're all as stupid as your little slaves? Anyway, so we'll read on. Oh yeah, and then he finishes off by saying, but Allah is ever round the rejectors of the faith. So this is a reference to the Old Testament where the snake in Eden, who is later known as Satan, the first thing he says when he falls to the earth with the humans, he says, I will always be behind you, watching what you do to try and hinder you. This is why later on in the New Testament, Jesus says, I will bruise thy heel upon the head of the snake. Because he knows the snake is slithering around in the background, but when they turn around to see him, he hides. He is hiding and using lies to avoid detection. He's going to deny all this right up until the last minute so that he can stay undetected. And that's why Jesus says, no, I'm going to smash him with my heel. I'm going to bruise my heel by stamping all over him. So that's what Allah is saying here. By Allah is ever round the rejectors of the faith. He is saying Allah is going to be hanging around in the background. He's going to be that cloud overhead bringing the misfortune to the Christians and Jews. But you, O oh Muslims, are going to be the thunderclap. You are the ones that are going to do my dirty work for me, says Allah in the book. You are going to be the ones to kill the Christians and Jews because they're not worshipping enough. That's what this means. 20. The lightning all but snatches away their sight. Every time the light flashes for them, they walk therein. And when the darkness grows upon them, they stand still in fear. And if Allah willed it, he could take away their faculty of hearing and seeing. For Allah hath power over all things. There's a nice strong verse, isn't it? This is what we love about Allah. He doesn't mince his words. Tell us what you really mean, Allah. That's what I feel like. <laughs> so what he means by this, the lightning all but snatches away their sight. So this is a confirmation that what I just said about them lying to us is true. The lightning collapse is the Muslims attacking the Christians and Jews with deception and lies, sneaking up behind them, stabbing them in the back with the lies. And the effect this is going to have, it's going to snatch away their sight. So even though he said a minute ago they're blind, they're having their sight snatched away now. So they're not physically blind. They are being blinded spiritually by the lies in this book, which the Muslims are going to bring them because they are following the Quran and Allah's instructions. So I think we get a bit of an idea now how evil this book really is, because this is page three. We haven't even got into the genocidal maniac bit yet, which is going to be fun when we do get to it. 
but I think it's clear for all to see. Allah is nefarious and benevolent. Or male- uh, not benevolent, he's malevolent. You know, he, he has bad intentions for everyone. He has bad intentions for his Muslims because he said, you have to do my straight path. I'm going to punish you with judgment at the end of it. And if you don't do it, I'm going to give you portions of wrath now. But you still have to worship, worship, worship me, do everything I tell you. And those guys over there who were just happily sat by a bonfire enjoying light and warmth and not posing you any threat, you're going to have to kill those guys. Not because they're upsetting you or because you have any problem. It's not even like they're threatening you. The reason, O Muslim, you have to kill the Jews and the Christians is because I, Allah, your Lord, is commanding you to. And if you don't do what you're commanded, wrath will be your portion. Judgment day will be yours. You will be just as bad as them. (coughs) Off the head, you're dead. That's what he's saying here. Then he finishes off by saying, And if Allah willed, he could take away their faculty for hearing and seeing. For Allah hath power over all things. So this is the second time he's lied on this page. Because we know for a fact, Allah does not have power over all things. That is nonsense. If he did indeed have power over all things, he wouldn't need this, would he, Muslims? Come on, use your head, Muslims. If Allah has power over all things, why is he sending you to do his dirty work? Why does he have enemies in Christians and Jews at all? Surely if he has power over all things, everyone would just be worshipping him naturally. They wouldn't have any argument against him. But they do. Well, not yet. You know, they don't even know about him yet. But they will have an argument against him because he's going to send you dumb slaves of Islam to go and kill them for no reason. And in doing so, you're going to get yourselves killed. So Allah's commandments bring nothing but pain and death. They are warlike and racist. And we know this from the first three pages of his book, the Quran of the Muslims. So anyway, that's the end of that one. That's what that means. And we'll carry on. 21. Oh, ye people. Right. (laughs) When he starts, oh, believers, oh, ye people. When he starts with an open statement like that, what he's trying to do is get away from the thing that he's just said. (laughs) Nothing to see here. Move on, guys. And it means he's about to tell you another lie, a big lie this time. So that's why he's saying that. 21. Oh, ye people. O ye people, worship your Lord, who created you and those that you may gain righteousness by. End of verse. So it's a short verse. Yeah, I think what he's saying here, this is like a war cry. So he's saying, O ye Muslims, listen up. Worship your Lord, who is me, Allah, in the book, who created you and those you may gain righteousness from. So who is the guys you're going to gain your righteousness from, O Muslims? Is it other Muslims? Can you gain righteousness through uh, other Muslims? Or is this Allah sneakily brainwashing you by saying those Christians and Jews over there who I'm just about to tell you to go and murder and sin against, when you do that, they are going to give you the righteousness of Allah because you will have killed them because Allah told you to. And that is the way you're going to get righteous. That's exactly what this means. So Allah is saying here, O ye people, Muslims, listen up. I'm going to give you a command. You're not going to like it, so I'm going to instruct you first. Worship your Lord, i.e. do al fatcher now, because you're going to have doubts. So don't have doubts. Do al fatcher to get rid of your doubts. Remember that Allah gives you everything you've got and created you, in his own words, even though he didn't. And the reason he's making this clear is because he is making a request of you, O Muslims. But he's not making it sound like a request. He's making it sound like an instruction. But if you think through what he's saying, it clearly is a request. Who created you and those you may gain righteousness from, i.e. Allah, why are you going to gain righteousness from them unless you do his command, which is to punish them and put out their bonfire? How are you going to get righteousness if you don't do that? So we know... Islam is a works-based religion, just like Catholicism. You don't get salvation or grace or anything good just through having faith or just through being a nice person. No. You have to physically work for it. So salvation is a paycheck. Allah's grace is a paycheck. You have to work Sunday and Saturday, O Muslims, killing Christians and Jews. Then you will get your righteous paycheck. And actually, he does call it wages as well later in the book. So we know Allah is an employer... Or a slave master, because he himself says these people are his slaves. 
And the first commandment that he's going to issue now, O slaves of Islam, is kill the Christians and Jews despite they haven't done anything. And if you don't, you're not righteous. That's what this means. Filth. Anyway, so we carry on. 22. Who has made the earth a resting place for you, and the heavens your canopy? Who has sent down the rains from the heavens, and brought forth therewith fruits for your sustenance? Then set not up rivals unto Allah, when you know the truth. How about that? Who has made earth a resting place for you? It's a question. So he hasn't told us that he created everything yet. Yes, he declared at the beginning that all things are brought to life through him, but he hasn't physically described creation. We haven't done the whole Adam and Eve bit yet. So he's saying, Muslims, who made all this stuff? They're not going to know because they don't know about Jesus and they don't know about the Jewish faith. They don't know anything. They can't read. So they haven't read any books yet. They haven't read the holy text. They haven't met any Jews or Christians. Allah is telling them through a rhetorical question that he is the one that actually made everything by saying, who made all this stuff then, guys? What, did you make it? Muslims, did you make the world? And they're like, no, of course we didn't make it. We're just born here. We grew up in it. Allah's saying, well, I must have made it then. Rather than outright saying like God does in the Old Testament, I created everything as a bounty for you to live in, which is what he does. Allah is saying, how did all this stuff get here then, guys? Did you make it? No, it must be me then. Then he goes on, and the heavens for your canopy, and sent down the rains from the heavens, and brought forth therewith fruits for your sustenance. So Allah is saying, everything on the ground was made by him, everything in the sky is made by him, everything that grows on the trees, i.e. fruits that you eat, that is made by him too, but there's a similitude there. Fruits is referring to the fruits of people's lives. So what Allah is saying is, everything good that a person does in their life or has, any good effect that they feel in their life, this all comes from Allah. But remember, it's a rhetorical question. So even though he's asking them, he's not actually saying that he did that. He's planting the seed in their mind that he did do that. And they don't know any better because they can't read and they haven't read the other holy books. And he's already said, this is the book. So he's tricking you, O oh Muslims. Figure it out, Muslims. This is blatant trickery. He's sending you to your death via this curse, I'm going to call it a curse, the curse of Allah is, if you don't do exactly what you're told, you slave, I will kill you. And what I'm telling you to do, O slave, is kill everyone else. And by the way, everything good in your life, everything you see must have been created by me, yeah? Because you, you didn't create it. Someone else created it, Allah, and Muslims. It's just he's not telling you that, is he? It's false doctrine. Then he rounds out the verse by saying, Then set up not rivals unto Allah when you know the truth. So he's saying in addition to all that stuff, he is not setting up rivals to those who know the truth. So he's saying those guys over there don't know the truth, that's why we're rivals with them, that's why I'm setting them up to be killed by you later, O Muslims, because they don't know the truth. Even though I said they've got a bonfire and it's making them happy, they've got light, warmth and everything else and they're peaceful, that's not true. What's true is this. What's true, O Muslims, is killing those guys, because I'm telling you to, and having everything in your life given to you by Allah. Everything that you do is the fault of Allah. And if you don't do everything Allah tells you, off with your head, you're dead. That's the truth, is what Allah is saying. But remember, it's part of his original rhetorical question. So this is not a factual truth statement. This is a question that is rhetorical. No answer is to be given. It's just a statement question. So this is Allah blinding their eyes with lies to get them to kill the guys with the truth over there. That's what this is saying, but it's just lying about it to make it seem it's the opposite way around. So we carry on, 23. And if you are in any doubt as to what we have revealed, our servant, then produce a surah like this one and call your witnesses or helpers, if there are any beside Allah, if your doubts are true. So it's more question, 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 more rhetoric. At this point we know Allah doesn't have any truth to give you, O Muslims. That is obvious. If Allah has truth to give you and he's gracious and merciful like he claimed, if he's the creator God, if he has power over all things, why is he making a nonsense of himself and you so that he can get you to kill complete strangers who are innocent, whose only crime is that they have light? 
that he claims he has, but they've already got some. The first thing he said is, those guys over there have got lights like a bonfire, makes them warm and happy. I'm going to be like a cloud of rain over the head, bringing misfortune on them. I'm going to punish them. But then he says, you're going to do it. So you Muslims are doing the dirty work of this demon, Allah, who is Satan. And the dirty work is killing these innocent guys over there who have got light. Don't you want the light, O oh Muslims? We're not going to try and kill you if you come and ask for some light. We're just going to give it to you. It's not ours. It belongs to God. He wants you to have it. He doesn't want you to go around murdering people. But that is what Allah wants you to do. Think. So we move on. Oh yeah, and then the last thing he says is, Set up not rivals unto Allah when you know the truth. So he's saying those guys are rivals to Allah in the book. And that means they are your rivals. So he's making you feel like, either way, whether you believe in Allah or not, you're going to not like Jews or Christians. Because think about it. If you believe in Allah, you follow his commands, you're going to punish them with the lightning flashes because he's commanded you to. If you reject Allah, they have a truth that they're hiding from you and they're bad people. So either way, you're going to not like them. Muslims, figure it out. Allah is brainwashing you to be a warlike murderer for his cause not your cause it's no benefit to you it's not going to get you light or it's not going to send you to heaven it's going to make you have a miserable poverty stricken existence of war and pain and the fruits of your life are going to be nothing then you're going to go to that fire and burn because you murdered people think about it if god is good and gracious and merciful why would the first thing he says in his holy book be kill those guys because they have a bonfire haven't done anything this is evil anyway so we carry on <sighs> 24 but if you cannot you know if, if you cannot write a surah like this one that's what he said he goes muslims if you think i'm wrong why don't you write your own quran he knows they can't read or write they're being preached this by a preacher they have no idea how to read or write so he's saying you stupid muslims you can't even read or write how do you not believe me saying that i'm god when you can't even read or write go on then write your own quran you can't exactly so i must be god then after that he says but if you cannot i know of a surety you cannot so he's saying go and write your own surah then but i know you can't because you can't read or write he's laughing at his muslims for being not educated Disgusting man. Disgusting. Allah, you are. Allah's a filthy pig. I'm going to say that now. Muslims, I'm sorry that you have to be told this by me, an evil Jew. Allah is a filthy lying pig who is deceiving you out of your freedom and your grace, which is yours by God's right. You were born into that. Allah's taking it away from you and making you murderers. Then he's insulting you. But if you cannot, and of a surety you cannot, then fear the fire whose fuel is people and their bones, which is prepared by Allah for those who reject his faith. Do I need to spell it out for you, Muslims? 24. But if you cannot, and of a surety you cannot, so he's saying, go write your own Quran that's better than mine, even though he knows you can't read or write. Then he's saying, but when you can't, and you definitely can't because I know you can't read or write, then fear fire i.e. hell, whose fuel is people and their bones. So he's going to be throwing heaps of bodies onto a fire, and that's going to include you, O oh Muslim, if you don't do what you're told here, despite that he knows you can't actually read it. So he's making you a slave of another one of his slaves, the Imam. You're a second-level slave. Evil. Then he goes on which is prepared by Allah for those who reject his faith. So he's saying the reason why he's preparing this great fire, which he's going to chuck all these humans on, and you, is because they won't worship him. Does this sound very gracious and merciful to you, Muslim? Think about what grace means. Think about what merciful means. If you're gracious and you're merciful... Do you shovel bodies onto a fire to burn them away because they weren't willing to worship you? Is that something a graceful and a merciful being would ever do? Or is it something Satan would do, bearing in mind he's already lied to you and he has told you that he's going to be lying to you and that you are going to be carrying those lies over to the Jews and the Christians? 
What's to say he's not lying to you here? It's probably a lie. The whole book is a lie. And the entire point of the book being a lie is to trick you, O oh Muslim, out of your God-given grace and salvation, which you'll get over there at that bonfire, in order that you can attack the enemies of Satan, who is Allah, because he is unable to do it. Therefore, he does not have power over all things. This entire page is just false. And that's the end of that page. So we move on to the next page, which I will show you now. Just so you know that I'm not making it up. So, 25. But give glad tidings to those who believe and work the righteousness that their portion is gardens beneath which rivers will flow. Every time they are fed with fruits therefrom, they will say, this is what we were fed with before, for they were given things in similitude, and they have therein wives who are pure and holy, and they abide therein forever. Come on now, Allah, are you having a laugh? So let's replay in our heads what the last couple of verses have been. Allah says, those guys over there are evil and bad, you have to kill them because they've got a bonfire, light and heat. Even though they're peaceful and they're not threatening you, because they're not worshipping me, you have to go and kill them even though you never met them. You have to go and lie to them and deceive them, otherwise you won't be able to kill them. So you deceive them with lies, then you hit them like a thunderclap, and then you disappear. If you don't, you'll be attacked like that by other Muslims. That's what Allah's saying. He's saying, oh Muslim, if you don't go and kill those guys, I will send other Muslims to kill you. Fear of the fire whose fuel is body and bones. That will be your body and bones on there. And I'm preparing this now, so you better get to it. Then the next thing he says is, but give glad tidings to those who do believe. So uh, we're giving glad tidings to other Muslims who believe. That's what this means. And work righteousness. And we know righteousness means killing the Christians and Jews. This is a genocidal maniac talking to you here, Muslims. Figure it out, please. Their portion is gardens. So where... Where have we known about a garden being a reward for righteous lives? Not in this book so far, but we have in the Holy Bible down here, the Old Testament, the Garden of Eden. So why doesn't he say the Garden of Eden will be your reward, O Muslims? No, he doesn't say that. He says your portion is gardens beneath which rivers flow. So it isn't the Garden of Eden. It's a new made-up garden that he's going to create after you kill the Christians and Jews. That's how that works. It doesn't exist yet. Every time they are fed the fruits therefrom, they say, this is what we were fed before, for they are given things in similitude. So what he's saying there, even though earlier he claimed that the Christians and Jews had strayed from his path, now he's saying... Before he turned up, you had fruits that you were eating, and the stuff he's going to give you is as good as what you had before. So if you already had the thing that he's given you, but you didn't have to kill anyone, why is he making out you have to kill those guys to get it when you already had it? Come on now, Muslims. I know you are more intelligent than this, Muslims. He has just told you, in a speech bubble... You are going to say when you get the righteousness, when you get to the latter end and you get to the paradise garden he's going to create and you eat the fruits of the paradise garden, you are then going to say, this is what we were fed from before. So how did you already have it before? If Allah is the one who is giving it to you and you have to kill those guys in order to be righteous enough to have it. If you already had it. You had it before. This is what we ate before. We ate before. We did eat before. We have eaten before. Means you are of God already. God has already given you the fruits already. You already have the chance of righteousness and grace already. Now you don't know because Allah said he's taking it away from you, making you deaf, dumb and blind through these lies. And the only way for you to get them back off him, he's stolen them from you then, the only way you're going to get those returned from Allah is by doing his dirty work, killing the Christians and Jews. But wouldn't you just know 
God will take those gifts off you himself for having been murderers. If you do that, so Allah is deceiving you, O Muslim, out of your free birthright of grace, salvation and the fruits of God. I.e. this guy is not him. Then he goes on and finishes the verse by saying, And they have therein wives pure and holy, and they abide therein for ever. So he's saying, you won't have holy virgins and holy brides here, because he doesn't like women, and we'll find that out when we get to Al-Nisa. But he's saying, once you kill the Christians and Jews, then I will give you the holy brides, and then you can live forever after you've just killed those guys for me, says Allah. This guy is an absolute sicko. This is a disgusting, psychopathic maniac that you are worshipping. It's clearly Satan. Sorry, I get angry when I read this book because it's just filth. It's just absolute garbage and disease. <sighs> Deep breath, let's carry on. 26. Verily Allah disdains not to give an example of anything, even of a mosquito or larger than it. Those who believe know that it is truth from their Lord, but those who reject his faith say, What means Allah by this similitude? By it he causes many to stray, and many he leads into the right path. But he causes not to stray except for those who forsake him. So this is... This actually upsets me to read, because Muslims are going to read this one way, Everyone else who has a flipping clue about language and knows what they're talking about is going to see it the way it was intended. So let's break it down. Verily, which means, you know, truthfully, Allah disdains not to give an example of anything. So even though he's already given four examples of similitudes about the Christians and Jews being around their bonfire and how we're going to kill them like lightning, how we're going to make them deaf, dumb and blind, O oh Muslims, and how you will be burnt on a fire if you don't, He's already given those examples. Now he's saying, oh no, but I don't give examples of anything, even a mosquito or larger than it. So he's saying, this isn't just an idea for you Muslims. This is not just an example. This is physically what your life is. So he's saying you don't have a choice in this Muslims. Like we know, he's taken away your free will because you did al Fatcha, the prayer to please, oh Allah, take away my free will. You did that thing. Allah is now saying, this is preordained. This is definitely going to happen. And the only thing that's going to be different is whether you willingly do it, then I will give you your holy virgins and you'll be righteous. Or if you do it unwillingly, i.e. if I trick you into it some other way, and then you didn't do it because you were following your Lord, and then you won't get your virgin. So he's setting up the whole paradise condition. And he's saying it doesn't matter whether you want to, Muslims, you're going to end up doing it one way or the other. So how about you just do what you're fucking told? That's what this is saying, and it just... Allah, I... This is how I came to faith, by the way. I discovered Satan before I discovered Christ. And just before I discovered Christ, I issued a challenge to Satan. And I said, Satan, you disgust me, you filthy, disease-ridden pig. I want to be the one that slits your throat, you disgusting animal, you sick demon. The things you have done to the people of this earth and this whole planet, they just make me want to vomit. And I want to be the guy that takes you down, Satan. So I challenged Satan. I didn't believe in God at this point. And guess what? I got very, very sick. I almost died. But Jesus saved me. Jesus physically appeared to me and saved me. And from that moment forward, I've recognised Jesus was answering my prayer to defeat Satan. That's why I'm reading this book to you now. And this is Satan saying, you are my slaves, Muslims. You can either do it willingly and then I'll reward you with holy virgins. A very trite reward, I must say. Or you can do it unwillingly. I will manipulate you and trick you into it and then I'll punish you for having done it. And the whole thing's a lie because the reward, he even said you already had it. God damn this guy. Anyway, let's carry on. So then he finishes off by saying, He causes many to stray, and many he will lead to the right path. So he's saying, his straight pathway, he's going to cause many to stray from it, so he's mind-controlling them not to be good, effectively, is what he's saying there, Christians and Jews. 
and many he will lead to the straight path. So he's describing free will, even though he said it doesn't. He said he has power over all things, and that no one has free will. Everything's preordained. What he's describing here is some people do the straight path because they choose it. Some people tell him to get absolutely stuffed, and they don't do it. But he's making sure you think that's his work anyway. And then he finishes off by saying, he causes not those to stray except those who forsake his path. So he's saying, the guys who don't follow his straight path, they're doing it because he, he doesn't want them to. He doesn't want them anyway. You know, he wants them to be sinful and die in pain because why would he want people who aren't loyal to him? Muslims, please figure this out. If you have power over all things, why would you set up such a convoluted system where most of the people on the world are not going to do what you want, your straight path, and then say, oh, well, they're, you know, I want everyone to do the straight path, and then when most of the people don't do it, say, well, they're not doing it because I'm, I'm brainwashing them. You know, I'm too smart for these guys. Secret agent Allah, that's what he's saying. Come on, Muslims, figure it out. Anyway, so we go from there on to the last two verses. The last three verses. 27. Those who break Allah's covenant after it is ratified, and who sunder what Allah has ordered to be joined and do mischief, these cause loss. So if we break it down, those who break Allah's covenant after it has been ratified, i.e. after you have been read this, because now you've been read it, you know that's it being ratified. Allah's saying, now that you've been read this, you have to do it, otherwise I punish you. But we already know that, so why is he repeating it? Because, Muslims, he wants you to be in fear of him. He's not all gracious and merciful. He's not just and loving. This is Satan. He wants you as a slave to go and kill innocent people. And the only thing he's offering you as a reward is fruits of heaven, which is already yours, which you already have, and holy virgins, which, in all honesty, you can get virgins now. You don't need him for that. Such a disgusting guy. Hey Allah. 28. How can you reject the faith in Allah, seeing that you were without life and he gave you life? Then will he cause you to die and will again bring you to life, and again you will return to his feet. So this is Allah describing how he's going to create his paradise, O oh Muslim. Let's go through it slowly. How can you reject the faith in Allah, seeing that you were without life and he gave you life? So he's saying... You were without life. You existed already, but you weren't alive. Think about that when he said actually he created you. Now he's saying you were already created, you just didn't have life. So someone else created you. He's physically just said that. Let's read it again because you're going to whinge. I know Muslims are going to moan about this. 28. How can you reject the faith in Allah, seeing that you were without life and he gave you life? So you were means you already were, you were already there, you already existed, but you were just without life. You haven't been born yet, but you'd already been created. He gave you life. Now, think back to the Garden of Eden story. When Adam and Eve were in heaven, they didn't live on earth, so they weren't alive on earth yet, but they were alive in heaven, you know, in Eden. They'd already been created by God. How did they manage to fall from Eden? Well, the snake came along blinded them with deceitful lies, tricked them out of their birthright, and then they rebelled against God and fell to earth, and now they are living and dying on earth. That is what he's describing here for you. He's saying you were already created, but you just didn't have life, i.e. you were in heaven already, in Eden, sinless and innocent, under God, who created you. And he gave you life down here by tricking you out of that causing you to rebel against God and sin, that's why you fell to earth and now you're going to live and die here. That's what he's describing. But he's trying to make it sound like he created you from nothing. No, he didn't. He just said, you already were. Then he gave you life. So you were already created, then he took you and made you alive here. Like he, he, he took you from heaven and made you alive here when you could have been in heaven with God. So he's admitting here he is the snake from Eden. Then he goes on. Then will he cause you to die and will again bring you to life. So he's saying about the judgment day, he's saying he's going to kill you once. Then he'll raise you from the dead and then he'll kill you the second time, the latter death. That is what he's talking about in the judgment day, which he is needing you to kill the Christians and Jews in order to get to. So he's describing here, 
He's going to kill you here if you don't do what you're told, kill the Christians and Jews. And when you die, killing the Christians and Jews, i.e. martyring yourself, i.e. you have your righteous end, which he's commanding you to have, then he's going to raise you from the dead. Then he's going to judge you. And if you haven't killed a Christian or a Jew, then he's going to send you to your latter end. So he's describing himself as Satan because God doesn't do that. God doesn't raise people from the dead so he can kill them. God gives everlasting life to those who worship him and who have faith in him. You don't have to kill anyone in order to get it. The stuff you're born with you can keep. Not so with Allah. Allah is a thief, a liar and a deceiver. And this is exactly why, O oh Muslims, he describes himself as the greatest of all deceivers, the master of trickers. He's tricking you out of the things you already have into being murderers and sending yourself to doom. And I really think you should think it through, Muslims, because the time is near. Think about it. Then we go to the last verse. It is he who hath created you for all things that upon earth Moreover, his design comprehended the heavens, and for he gave order and perfection to the seven firmaments, and all of the things he hath perfect knowledge. End of verse, end of reading. So, let's go through that last bit. It is he who will, it is he who hath created for you all things that are upon the earth. So, if he has created all things upon you that are on the earth, why has he put them in other countries and put you here? Think about that. If the entire world was your possession, why do you have to get it from killing the Christians and Jews? Perhaps the entire world is not your possession, O Muslims. Perhaps everyone is born near the things they are supposed to have, and therefore everyone has something. But not in Allah's words. Allah is saying everything in the world is created specifically for only Muslims. And the way you're going to recover it. So he's making out everyone else has stolen the stuff they were born into. The same way he's making out you weren't born into the things you had. That you have to kill people to get them back. Allah is saying everything on earth belongs to you. So they've stolen it off you. Those evil Christians and Jews that I want you to go and kill. And I'll punish you if you don't. They have taken it off you. And the only way you're going to get it back. Is by doing what you're told. Then he finishes off the verse by saying, All things that are on the earth are his design and comprehended the heavens, for he gave order and perfection to the seven firmaments. Now what's he talking about with seven firmaments? Well, I can tell you because I've studied this book, and even though it doesn't tell you now, later in the book it will put more meat on that bone. So the seven firmaments is describing how he slices up the flat earth, because obviously Islam is based on the flat earth model. So imagine the earth is like that. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six little bits around the edge and a big bit in the middle, seven firmaments. Allah is the bit in the middle, the big firmament, and the six bits around the edge are the continents, you know, the country, the big land masses of the world. So back before um, navigation was a thing, you know, before when this was written, it was written by extremely uneducated people, as we could tell. Allah thought when he was reading this that all six firmaments would be um, accessible by land. He didn't realise that they were split up by the oceans. Neither did he know that the earth isn't actually flat. So that's what he's describing here. He's saying, I designed everything and I made the world into these seven firmaments that all come off me in the middle, these six land masses. And you have one at the moment, Muslims, but what you have to do is flood into all these other ones and take them over by force, killing all the Christians and Jews. Then I will make you righteous. That's what he's saying here. His design comprehended the heavens and he gave order and perfection to the seven firmaments and all of the things he hath perfect knowledge. Apart from um, he doesn't have perfect knowledge because right at the beginning of the book, I'll refer back to it, he said he made his Quran easy to understand. But then we know Caliph Abdul Malik had to add vowels and dots under the letters to make it easy to understand. So he didn't have perfect knowledge because he didn't have vowels and dots. And he didn't have decimal places, because when we get to the inheritance bit, he does everything in fractions. If he's doing it in fractions, it's because he hasn't discovered decimals yet. 
Muslims, come on now. We've gone through four pages of your Quran and we have like 50 different reasons to know this is absolute nonsense. This is filthy trash and false evil garbage. If you believe on this, it just says something about you that is not good. Please reconsider. In fact, you know what? I'm getting too angry about doing this. That's the end of the reading for today. So let's summarise what we know about Allah so far. He is domineering. He's a liar. He treats his own people like stupid, retarded children and begs for their compliance, but then punishes them when they don't give it to him. And he has made enemies of everybody else on earth who is not already an Arab Muslim. And he has commanded his Arab Muslims to go and kill those guys for the crime of having a bonfire. That's their crime. They have a bonfire. They have light and heat and they are peaceful and happy and they are doing well. That's their crime. And for that crime, he's going to tell his Muslims to go and slaughter them down to the last man and then die themselves as martyrs. So when everybody on earth is dead, then we get to the judgment day, you know, the latter end that he keeps talking about so fondly. And when you get to the latter end, the way he describes it is this. Everyone gets killed, then you get to judgment day, Allah resurrects everyone, then he kills everyone again. Apart from the people who did the Jew and the Christian murdering, they go to the paradise which he'll create, and then their reward will be fruit, which they can already have, and virgins, which they can already have. So their reward is nothing. Apart from their sending themselves to hell by rebelling against real God, who Allah even says created you, and I quote, you were created, but then I gave you life. So you were created already, and the only thing he did was bring you to earth, so he took you out of heaven where God wanted you to be, by tricking you with lies, and brought you here where you're going to live and die, and you have to do what he tells you. But there's a better way, Muslims. Throw this garbage in the bin where it belongs. And if you really want to follow God and observe his true grace and know true peace, true grace and mercy and righteousness, then you need look no further than the Holy Bible and Jesus. So I'll ask you one more time, please pray to Jesus. What, all you need to do is one prayer to Jesus. If he doesn't answer you, fine. But I guarantee you that he will. And then you won't have to do the slaughtering of innocents. You won't have to go to war with the rest of the world. You will not have to live in poverty. You will not have to sell your soul to this demon, Allah, who is not God. And you will have a better life. There will be no jihad. You can just be peaceful. Think about it, okay? So anyway, that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed that and you learned something. God bless you all. And I'll see you, lovely people, in the next one. Bye now. Oh, so that's all for today. Apologies, I got a little bit hot under the collar there. It does annoy me doing this, but it needs to be done. So catch up with me tomorrow for more Without Lies, Islam Dies. In the meantime, God bless, have a lovely day, and I'll see you, lovely people, in the next one. Bye now. Bye, 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 bye.